Hey team, we're going to learn how we can easily deploy a Jamstack app and manage Git-based markdown content with Cloud Cannon. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Today's video is brought to you by the topic of the video, Cloud Cannon. Cloud Cannon gives you and your team awesome collaborative features with a great DEX developer experience that generally allows you to deploy sites that are going to be performant for your user experience. If you want to learn more about all the awesome features Cloud Cannon provides on top of what we're going to work through today, make sure you head over to cloudcannon.com where you can sign up for your account for a free trial. So we're going to learn how we can deploy our Jamstack sites out to Cloud Cannon. If you're not familiar with the Jamstack, it's traditionally based on being able to provide users static sites where that first load isn't going to have to do any kind of rendering on the server. Instead, we use our static site generator or framework of choice, which pulls in all of our content at compile time, where we then can publish that site basically wherever we want, such as awesome providers like Cloud Cannon. So to see how this works, we're going to use React Framework Next.js, which gives us a ton of features out of the box, including routing and data fetching, and it really just helps us get super productive with our apps. Now, if you're already familiar with Next.js, maybe you're wondering, doesn't it need a server? And while we do at compile time, we can use tools like get static props and then statically export our site, which we'll see how we can do today, where we can then deliver a pure static HTML site with all the assets included. Now, in particular, we're going to use this demo website starter that I put together, where it really is just going to give us a simple website out of the box with some markdown capabilities that's generating the content for the site. Now, if you want to follow along, you can find the link to this starter right inside the description of this video. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and copy this yarn create next app command, or you can use NPX if you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and copy that into my terminal, and I'm going to say my cloud cannon app. And what that's going to do is it's going to clone down that project from Git. It's going to install the dependencies and refresh the Git history, and basically get us up and running so we can get started. But once it's done, I can now CD into that directory. I'm going to run yarn dev, which is going to start up a local development server, which I can open up in a new tab. And once it's load, we can see our new website where we just have some blog posts on our main page. We also have an about page and a newsletter page, and it's really just some sample content that we have in here to get started with our new website. Now we're not going to dig too much into the code, but if we open up the source here and we go to pages and we go to index.js, we can see that for the most part, this looks like a pretty basic React application. But if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we see we have this function that we talked about earlier called get static props, which what this is going to allow us to do is get our data at compile time, meaning before we actually upload it and deploy it, that way we can actually save all that hard work for the network request for when it's actually getting built and we can grab all that post data and pass it in as props into our application and we're not going to make our user pay for that actual networking time. But ultimately we want to be able to get this application up and deployed over to Cloud Cannon. So let's see how we can do that. Now, if this is our first time actually logging into Cloud Can, we'll see that we're going to start off on our account summary and we don't have any sites yet. So we want to click return to sites, which is going to give us this UI where now we can hit add new site and we can see that we have a few options, but we're going to connect our own files. Then we can say whatever our site name is going to be. Let's call it space jelly or really whatever you want your site to be called. I'm going to click create site. And we can see that we can then choose our source, where in particular, we're going to use GitHub for this walkthrough. But we can see that we also have support for GitLab and Bitbucket, or even uploading a folder from our computer if we'd like to. But I'm going to select GitHub, which I'm already authorized and authenticated with. And then we're going to need to select our repository. So this means we're going to need to actually get our site up onto a Git repository before we can actually move forward. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and first create a new repository over on GitHub. I'm going to go ahead and call that my cloud cannon app, just like I did locally. I'm going to click create repository. And we can see now we have a few instructions on how we can get our local project up. Now, because of the way that Next.js works, it already initialized Git for us and it already has a main branch. So really all, all we need to do is these last two steps. So I'm going to first copy this first line. I'm going to paste that in so I can add that origin. Then I'm going to add that push command as well, which is going to push all those files up to GitHub. Or now if I refresh the page, we can see that I have my new GitHub repository with all those files. Now back over on Cloud Cannon, I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page and then reselect my GitHub repository file source. That way inside of this search for your repository, once it actually collects all my repositories, I can search for my Cloud Cannon app. We can see that it popped up right here and we can see that I have 
an option for either using my existing branch or creating a new. Now, because I only have a main branch at this point, I'm just going to use that and I'm going to select main as that'll be my default production branch. I'm going to click sync files to keep moving this process forward. Now we can see that Cloud Cannon has actually detected what kind of site we have, particularly Next.js. And we can also see that it's in beta, so it might not have all the features that some of the other frameworks have at this point in time. But we can see that we have the ability to define our build options, where we have our preserved paths, ours is going to be node modules, that makes a lot of sense. We don't have any environment variables at this time, but if you do, this would be the place to add them. And then we can see where we get down to our install options, like our command line options, where this has npm install by default. Now, because I'm using Yarn locally, I'm just going to go ahead and use Yarn, but you can keep NPM if you decide to use NPX and NPM uh, for your project. But then also for the build command. Now, the tricky thing for the build command is when we're using Next.js, we want to make sure that we're statically compile this, compiling this. And we'll see in a second that what we want to do is not only do we want to Yarn build this, but we want to also do something called Next export which we don't currently have an option for in our project, but we'll see that when we first try to actually deploy this, it's going to fail. So we're going to leave this as yarn build for now, and we're going to set the output path because that's where the folder is going to actually get uh, compiled to. But then we can scroll down and we can see that we have two other options where we have use the beta version of Cloud Cannon Reader, which we're going to select to check that because we want Cloud Cannon to try to read the information of our repository. And then finally, we can just leave the include git folder off as we don't really need that as part of our system. But finally, like I said, we can click build site and that's going to go through and run all of the commands and try to actually deploy our site. And once Cloud Cannon gets through all those steps, we can see that our site is ready to go. And we can see that mine was deployed to the random name of freezing mushroom. And if I open that up in a new tab, we can see that it's actually not found. Now let's head over to our logs and see what happened. If I click over to the status tab inside of Cloud Cannon and I look inside, I can see all the build logs. I'm gonna particularly select Next.js. And if I look through, it says that it cannot find that out directory as it doesn't exist. And that's because we're only currently building our Next.js site. And now we also need to export it, like I said. So back inside of the project, I'm going to go open up my package.json file and we can see under scripts that we already have a few options and particularly we see our build script going on where all it's doing is running next build and that's great, but we want to also export it. So I'm going to tack on two and signs and I'm going to say also next export, which is going to export it to static files for us. Now we can even test this locally by running yarn build or npm run build inside of our terminal where we can already see that it ran next build and next export and we can see that as it goes through it's going to first build the site just as we'd expect and then we can see how it's going to work when we try to export it. We can see after it goes through the build process we have export successful and we can even look inside of our project under the out directory and we see all those html files which is exactly what's going to get deployed out to Cloud Cannon. So I'm going to run git add minus a and I'm going to add that file in there and say updating build script. I'm going to simply push out that commit where actually what's going to happen is as soon as we push that out, we can see that Cloud Cannon is already building that new site with that new commit automatically without us having to actually trigger a new build. That way we can always make sure that we're keeping our production branch nice and up to date. But this time, once it's actually complete, we can open up that URL again and we can now see that our new site is deployed up to Cloud Cannon. So next, another capability of Cloud Cannon is giving us the ability to actually manage and edit this content inside of our project. Well, we can actually go through and manually find all the files that we actually want to edit, such as if we wanted to edit our homepage, we can already come here and edit the source, but we have other options by using a configuration locally in our project so that Cloud Cannon can actually see what we define as our content. So I'm going to create a file in the root of my project called Cloud Cannon dot config dot js i'm going to first start off by defining a module dot exports i'm going to set that to a new object now if we head over to the cloud canon documentation what we ultimately want to do is define our collection and we can do that by defining our collections config along with all the other options that we're going to actually need which we're going to walk through now so we're going to go ahead and start off and define our collections config and we're going to again set that to a new object as well then we want to add a key for our actual collection content that we're about to set up. And we have two things that we want to eventually set up, our pages and our posts. So I'm going to first add my posts. So I'll say posts, and that is a new object as well. 
And then I have five things that I want to set up for that. I'm going to have my name, a path, a parser. I'm going to have output and a URL. Now my name, just like the key, I can call posts. Then my path, that's going to be where this content is actually located. And in my project, it's located at source posts. So I'm going to say source underscore posts. And then my parser, I'm going to use front matter for my parser so that I can actually see the content at the top of my markdown files. Now for output, I'm going to say I want it to be true as these files that we're going to be able to edit actually produce output inside of our project. And then finally, we want to define what the final URL pattern is going to be for our actual posts. Now, if we look inside of our pages directory, we have this set up so it's going to be slash posts slash slug. So we want to add it just like that. So I'm going to say slash posts slash, and then I'm going to add the slug in brackets. And it's not going to be something that has to line up one to one with the actual name of the Next.js file. It's going to just be this slug in the brackets because that's what Cloud Cannon is going to understand it as the slug. But now we have our post set up. So let's get this up to Cloud Cannon and see what happens. This time, once it finished, we can actually see that under blogging, we now have a new option for posts. And if we click into that, we can now see all of those different posts that we had local as files. If we click into one again, we can see that we're actually brought up into an editor, a nice looking editor, not just the source of the code, where we can make changes to any of the content in our site, including all the front matter that belongs to each and every one of those markdown files. Now the cool thing is we can select this drop down and we can see that we have a couple different options for how we interact with this file. And particularly, we still have this option to edit the source of it, where if you're not familiar with the structure of Markdown, we have this front matter at the top, which just defines a few data points, which is what we saw on the left. Now the rest of it is going to be our content, which is parsed inside of our project. And then we can actually edit it as content if we prefer right inside this nice editor. Now this is looking really great, but we also want to manage our pages like this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and clone this object and I'm going to rename everything instead of posts to pages. I'm going to make sure that my name is actually capitalized. And the biggest difference here is we want to make sure that we're passing in the URL as the appropriate URL. Now we don't actually have pages in front of the slug like this. If we look at the file inside of pages, it just exists at the root of the pages directory called page slug. And the way that works is if we don't manually define that file, it's going to fall back to that dynamic page slug and create it using that template. So we're going to leave this as slash slug where it's going to be able to create those files for us. And just like before, once it finishes, we can now see we have the pages area where we can select our about page and edit any of the content that we'd like. Now, in terms of actually editing the content, we can do this right inside of this editor. So for instance, if I wanted to add a new line such as then Cosmo made web tutorials for the entire galaxy. How about that? And I click save. And what that's going to do is it's going to actually update that file inside of my Git project since these files are Git based and then it's going to redeploy, which we saw just happened automatically. If we look back in our GitHub project, we can see that we have this new commit called updated source pages about via Cloud Cannon, where it actually adds that change. And to prove that it works, we can see once it's done, we can actually open up our site and we can navigate over to the about and we see that then Cosmo made web tutorials for the entire galaxy. But what if I don't want to actually make these changes on production? What if I want to create these changes in a branch so I can preview them and share them around before I actually merge them into my project? Now, currently, we're only taking advantage of the sites feature where we have our one site of Space Jelly, where we need to take this to another level and we need to create a project where that site is going to live under. So let's start by doing that and clicking create your first project. And I'm going to still name this Space Jelly as my project is ultimately going to be Space Jelly. And we can see that we now have some options for actually getting this set up. Now to actually get this configured, I'm going to click open settings and we can see that we need to now select a Git repository where the only one we currently have connected is my Cloud Cannon app, which is what we want to use. And we can see that this is going to see what we're going to actually show as our main branch. Now our production branch is main, so that's going to be exactly what we want, our existing site that we have on here. We can even see the preview details if we want, but we don't need any of this right now. We're just going to hit update project and we can see that that's going to automatically update our new project with our existing site. 
Now once we reload the page for the site section, we can see that we now have the ability to add a new site. Now what's going to happen is we're going to have multiple sites where our main Space Jelly site is going to be that main branch that we had already created. But now we're going to create a new site for every other branch that we want to create and that's going to be our developer branches or just having some changes staged so that we can share them out. Now, before we move forward with this particular feature, branching workflows are only available for team accounts. So make sure that if you're actually working through this, you're only going to be able to access these features if you're on that plan. But I'm going to head up to add new site and we can see that I now have the ability to add my configuration. I'm going to call this space jelly dev and we can see that it's going to create a new branch for me. Now, if I have an existing dev branch, I can use that, but we have the ability right inside of the UI to create this branch. And I'm going to just leave it as space jelly dev, which was auto-generated. I'm going to go ahead and click create site. We can see that Cloud Cannon is already starting to work through the existing build configuration that we have, and it's trying to take that new branch and build it and deploy it out onto a new preview that we're going to be able to have available at a different URL. We can see that once your site is ready, we now have our URL, which this time it's Fancy Coconut, which I'm going to open up in a new tab, and we see that right now it looks exactly like it did before. But this time, if I wanted to go to pages and I want to go to about again, and how about I want to add another line? And then how about I'll say, then people learned and were able to level up their web dev skills. I'm going to then click save, which just like before, it's going to commit that, but it's going to this time commit it to that branch that we just created. If we look over on GitHub, we can now see that we have that separate branch. And if I select it, we can see that we now have that updated content that was just published. We see that new line of then people were able to level up their skills. And again, once this is finished, we could open up our fancy coconut. We can go to about and we can see that new line. Now, if we navigate quickly back to our project, we can see that we have Space Jelly and Space Jelly Dev. If we select back into our original Space Jelly, we can open up our URL for the freezing mushroom and we can see on the about page we still don't have that but now since we're going to approve that change we can merge it in and say yes we want to deploy that to production so back on the home page of my fancy coconut dev branch we can see that under actions i have the ability to now publish changes i'm going to click publish and then i'm going to also delete the site since once it's published i don't really need that again or to make additional changes but then it's going to go through delete the site and it's going to now publish my original production site. And once deployed, I'm going to open that live site up. I'm going to head over to the about, and we can now see that that change is up on production. Similarly, if we look at the main branch over in GitHub, we can now see that merge branch commit, which pulled those new changes into our main branch. But as we can see, not only is Cloud Canyon giving us the ability to easily deploy our Jamstack sites out to the web, it's giving us an easy ability to not only manage our content ourselves, but collab with other people on our team as they're creating their own branches and making changes to the content. Cloud Cannon gives us a great way for how we can deploy our projects out to the web. And on top of that, being able to manage our content in a sane way, including all those markdown files we have in our Git projects. Are you a fan of the Jamstack? Let me know in the comments and let me know what's your favorite part of building with the Jamstack. Otherwise, if you want to learn more about the page creation and data fetching process inside of Next.js, check out my video, Create Pages and Fetch Data in Next.js Using Static and Dynamic Routes. Or if you want to learn how you can dynamically generate all your SEO tags, including using get static props like we saw today, check out my video, React SEO with Next.js. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.